It's the thing that comes after a, a video camera. It's the thing that comes after a camcorder. Technical, technologically, you want to hear about it? It's a connect with a digital camera. It's probably, there's some, I guess there's a sound microphone and there's this amazing blinding light. I feel like I should put on some Ray-Bans or something. Um, you've increased the bandwidth intake, but just serendipitously, you're also discovering um, a really brand new and much easier way to to edit the expression. You know, I used to work in, in CG post and stuff like that and motion graphics and we had we would hand rotoscope a moving baby. Now you don't have to do that anymore. You know, you could just put all that time into creativity instead of rotoscoping. And you know, thank heavens. The point cloud. You take each word and have a different algorithmic treatment per word. Oh, coding, I started. I got a TI-82 calculator when I took geometry in high school, and that was the mid-90s, shortly after we got a Windows 95 box. And I think it was just a continuation of our, you know, like, Tiger handheld LCD video games, to Nintendo Entertainment System, to Sega Genesis. You know, it was just kind of like, okay, I, I see that the Nintendo is more than just entertainment, said my father. It's doing more for you, and you're learning, so let's Let's step it up a notch, and we got America Online, and at that point I got in trouble. Okay. And that's how I learned how to program, was I addicted myself. And I'm highly addicted to programming. You can't stop me, sometimes I forget to eat. Sometimes I forget to sleep. And I don't know, can you turn a pickle back into a cucumber? Probably not, so I'm here for life. You've, you've got me, it's terminal terminal disease and coding automation I want to be a robot and now we don't have to be robots we can just be cyborgs and the computer as a as a psychological or cognitive uh, prosthesis will maybe in the future be more of an emotional prosthesis but that's up to the artists so right now you oh uh, I <clears throat> I dream in code. Some, one time I woke up and, and I said, Rebecca, what time is it? And then I said, is, I think it's January 1111111111, like that. And in 1999, I was making out with my girlfriend, Anne Marie, and, and I fell asleep because I was very tired. And I could see the, a function with a, with a block of code with if then statements and for loops describing the, the, um, the kiss. From the human mind. It's based on the human mind. It's based. It's based on business logic. It's based on what existed before it. You know, like, like take the VCR. It's got a play button, a stop button. You know, and then look at processing. It's got a play button and a stop button. So we inherit. Computer has has inherited. It's like the first Turing complete thing in the home, right next. And it's always bothered me that as a user interface. The computer doesn't recover from that. You can do a lot of corruption damage to your hard drive and stuff like that. If you just pull the plug out of the wall, that shouldn't be the case. They should, they should spend a little money and do some engineering so that the computer can just sort of, uh, you know, like store some, store a little bit of power and use the power for times when people unplug to, to just go out safely. I don't understand why, why they, they just think, well, that's user error. There's no such thing as user error. There's computer error. So I think it's computer error that you unplug it and then your hard drive gets corrupted. More ephemeral. I've, I've suffered from so many hard drive crashes. I, I don't trust myself to store my own archives anymore. I just, I get an Amazon S3 bucket and I just put things on the cloud. I've lost CDs and hard drives, like lazy hard drives and things like that. And the code. Uh, yeah, if I make something open source and, and throw it up on GitHub or something, I'm hoping it'll propagate, but uh, what I've experienced with putting code on, on GitHub and making it open source is that there's like, like most people who, who have access to the code just sort of take the code and, and integrate what they find into their own software and, and don't say anything. It, it, it's rare that you find someone who, who is enough of a mensch that they'll contribute back to the project and will want to commit 
their changes back into the repository. And that small minority of people get my respect. And I hope that that population grows. Mm. And it uh, maybe art directors overlook something special that's happening that's different. And you can learn from your own process. You can learn from coding. And then there's a lot of also, there's also a lot of uh, uh, aesthetic decisions and real design and art decisions that need to be made by a programmer who is, who is doing media and interaction. And that create for a viewer. I'm trying to create a glucose metabolism rate high, which is something you get when you play Tetris. And you get you, you see the little boxes, and then you walk away, and you still see the boxes. You, you go out into the world, and you hey, look at that trash can over there. Oh wait, it's a Tetris shape. Because look, it's an L somehow. Um, so, for example, think of a, an art directorial body that's a hundred people crowdsourced on Amazon Turk, instead of a Grammy win award winning dude who you know at, who sits at a desk in an advertising firm. Which one could be stronger? I'd like to find out, you know? And I'm on this list serve for code artists, and each one of them has this like amazing solo reputation. Like, wow, Robert Hodgin, Joshua Davis, Zach Lieberman, Theo Watson, you know? And what happens if you take all those people and combine them into a single collaborative body and then publish under a nom de plume for the collective? For example, William Shakespeare, and have the public assume that it's just another one of us. Would the work? No, I think actually we need more cooks than that. I don't believe in too many cooks. Um, I think that when when there is a too many cooks situation, I think we're just on the way to adding the right number of cooks. Yeah, and and. I don't think we should worry so much, you know, like original, non-original. What about folk art? That's incredibly homogenous, but yet we love it. You know, someone makes me a home sweet home and frames it, you know, with, with cross hatching. I love them because it's a gift, you know? I don't care about the originality so much. And I think originality is overrated. Yeah. It could be a result of, of geek culture. A lot of geeks are self-isolating. Um, and using computers and technology can be their escape, and it's their, it's their safe haven. And then that gets reflected in the work, and what you see is something that's less social than you're used to. Um, and I think we just, we just need to be more social. I mean, what you were saying about... It's just more important to deal with humans, infinitely more important to deal with other humans than it is to deal with, with your calculator. Yeah. So is it Yes, but I can get immersed in, in my popcorn. I can get immersed in my T-bone steak. So for you... Yeah, not lacking. Well, I think there's immersion everywhere. Yeah. And, but I think computers will, will probably far excel you know, beyond the, the immersion that we know now. Can you take us there? Like Some directors actually grok the idea that the code artist is something different than a CG production guy and those directors are very special and I think they should stay. and also things exploding out into icosahedrons an ode to that old character bit I, I, I'm trying to see who's anti-corporate and who's pro-corporate at this point because having having taken a job um, in that world in Silicon Valley constantly trying to bring my friends into the situation, but I think that they just don't, they don't, they can, they don't care for it. It doesn't seem attractive to them. But I would love to have them around and, and collaborate with them in that context. But I think that they would rather remain freelancers and, and artists and things like that who, who are not corporate. I think um, when you say corporate to someone, they think of Dilbert. <clears throat> I dream in code. Some, one time I woke up and, and I said, Rebecca, what time is it? And then I said, is, I think it's January 1111111111, like that. And in 1999, I was making out with my girlfriend, Anne-Marie, and, and I fell asleep because I was very tired. 
and I could see the a function with a, with a block of code with if-then statements and for loops describing the, the, um, the kiss. From the human mind, it's based on the human mind. It's based, it's based on business logic. It's based on what existed before it, you know? Like, and I'm highly addicted to programming. You can't stop me. Sometimes I forget to eat. Sometimes I forget to sleep. And I don't know, can you turn a pickle back into a cucumber? Probably not. So I'm here for life. You've, you've got me. It's terminal. Terminal.